Today we have our special guests with you. We also have in the studio at the moment Mr. Mark Brantley, uh, Mr. Mark Anthony Graham Brantley, to be precise. And he is Deputy Premier of Nevis. He's the Minister of Foreign Affairs. He has a lot of portfolios. Uh, he attended University of the West Indies, Norman uh, Manley Law School, also a graduate of Oxford University as well. Uh, he's litigated several very important cases. I'm not going to give you the details of that. And he's now sitting in the chair in WinFM 90.9 as part of activities for Team Unity's celebration, celebration of a second year in office. We say good morning to Mr. Brantley. We'll invite some opening remarks. And, of course, the question we're going to ask Mr. Brantley is, well, in your words, from your perspective, what is there to celebrate? Well, thank you very much, Clive. It is an absolute pleasure to be here uh, with the Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Timothy Harris, as we continue our celebration of the second anniversary of a Team Unity administration. Uh, let me start, Clive, by thanking you. It has been a long time since I've been a guest here on, on Voices, and I want to thank you and WinFM. I remember that there were days when friends were few, and WinFM would always give me an audience, and I'm truly grateful for that. And I think sometimes we need to record that these are the facts insofar as our history is concerned. And I want to thank WinFM. I think WinFM has been instrumental in assisting, certainly myself, in getting a voice and being able to speak to our people at home and abroad. So I go on record firstly by commending you and your staff and by thanking you and your staff for always having an available opportunity uh, for individuals to come and share their views. Uh, Clive, I have always been of a view that it is important that we engage with our public, that we engage as much as possible. Uh, we are all public servants, servants of the people, and I feel that if that is to have true meaning, we have to be able to come to the people on occasions such as these and on platforms such as these, which are widely available, widely talked about, and widely accessible to a vast majority of Kiddishans and Nivisians, not just at home, but those in the diaspora as well. And certainly as a government, we try and we intend to be as inclusive as we can and to take all shades of public opinion. Uh, I am of a view that oftentimes we can learn even from our harshest critics if only we are prepared to listen. And I think that this government has brought a particular style to governance, a departure from what was, and we are seeking to engage in terms of our public. You ask what is there to celebrate. I think there's so much to celebrate. Our Prime Minister is here, and I'm sure that he has a long list of things. I clearly come from Nevis, and so... Uh, my point has been, and it's been a consistent point, that unity was an idea. Unity was something that we, who put this idea together with the help of the people, said and went out and agitated and said, listen, here's an opportunity for people who have in the past been involved in political parties and have held positions, even strongly held positions. Here are a group of people who have said we will put aside our historic differences, our historic party allegiances, and we will come together guided by one principle and one principle only, the love of our country. Here's a group of people who said that we will put aside all that divided us and seek to engage with and seek to encourage and seek to capitalize on those issues that unite us. And we have, I think, that experiment, that idea. Our people watered it, it has germinated, and I think two years later, it is bearing spectacular fruit. From Nevis, and the perspective from the smaller island, which is a constituent element of this country called St. Kitts and Nevis, I think the relationship is the best that it has ever been between St. Kitts and Nevis. And if we credit unity with nothing else, and if we credit our Prime Minister with nothing else, I think it is the first time in our history, and it is a history that is a long history. It is a history going back almost two centuries of difficulty, of agitation and discontent. And I feel that the mood now is different. The people of Nevis now 
genuinely feel that they are part of the country that is St. Kitts and Nevis. They now feel for the first time that they are included, and that was the promise of unity. That is what the people of Nevis bought into. And I am happy, as I've said in other places, that I am alive and standing in the middle of our history. We're not waiting for it to be created for us. We are refashioning and retooling our country, equipping our people to do the very best that they can and to make St. Kitts and Nevis the best small island state. It is not a coincidence, Clive, that our country, small as it is, the smallest in the hemisphere. And I think people need to put that in perspective because the smallest in the hemisphere is leading them. The Bible says that a child should lead them. We're not quite a child. But we are the smallest and we are leading them. You look at our economic output. You look at the reports, whether they be the IMF, whether they be the World Bank, whether they be our own central bank. You look at what is out and you realize that St. Kitts and Nevis is punching well above its weight and performing and outperforming many of the bigger neighbors that we have in the region. I attended a recent meeting of, of uh, CELAC which is the organization uh, between Latin America and the Caribbean. And uh, we had a presentation there from a UN organization, UN ECLAC, looking at economic forecasts. And Clive, it gave my heart tremendous joy and pride to see that in all the countries of Latin America and the Caribbean, St. Kitts and Nevis was on the chart as number three in terms of economic growth. Number three of all. CELAC represents 33 countries, and of all those 33, St. Kitts, little St. Kitts and Nevis was at number three in the entire region, Latin America and the Caribbean in terms of growth. That, to my mind, is testimony to the success and the spectacular fruit that Team Unity has borne and will continue to bear. I, again, thank you for this opportunity. The Honorable Prime Minister is here. And uh, certainly, uh, whilst he's here, he no doubt will expound on so many other successes. But for me, as I close my opening uh, statement, Clive, it is really the difference that this government has brought to the relationship between the NIA and the federal government and the relationship, more importantly, between the people of Nevis and the people of St. Kitts. We are the best that we have ever been in the history of these two islands. Well, I want to thank you very much for your opening comments, uh, Mr. Brantley. Thank you again, Clive, and thank you to the callers. Uh, a few just brief matters. Uh, I, I, Clive, the, the, the gentleman called in and he talked about uh, governance. He talked about issues that he felt were important. And I'm happy that the Prime Minister addressed it because too often I hear the cries. And I sometimes wonder if the public was aware that we had a government for 20 years. As I said to someone just this morning, a government of 240 months. This government has had 23 months, less than two years. And it seems to me like there's some out there who are clamoring for the government to fulfill every single commitment and to solve every single problem in the country in 23 months. That is unrealistic and unfair. I think we have to be judged, as the Prime Minister said, on our record to date, with the understanding that we are systematically rolling out our program. Our agenda was prosperity and good governance. I believe that the statistics are there and they prove that the prosperity agenda is working. We have now said that it is time to continue on the good governance agenda. And so I think it is, it is sad when people come and they posture in this way because for 20 years, Speaker, the, 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 the gentleman called in and spoke about the tone in the country. Perhaps he missed some of the well-known ringtones that emanated from the previous prime minister. Some of the outlandish statements that the school children had with much mirth and merriment around the country as ringtones. That is how our country had been reduced. The office of the prime minister had been debased to such an extent. Clive, thank you. May God bless you and Win FM, and may God bless the good people of St. Christopher and Nevis.